Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at uh, commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for Monday, October 5th, 2020. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to subscribe and hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. Um, subscribe button should be here down in the corner. So let's get to it. So we'll look at uh, W2I oil first of all, and last week was absolutely terrible for WTI. We broke down significantly on Friday. We were down more than 4%. We had a little bit of pullback, which is very common. You can see what happens usually when we have major pullbacks within the end of the trading session. We have some kind of pullback. So at this point, we are testing these levels here of uh, 36 to uh, 37 level. And if we break through that, then we'll go all the way down to 35 and even lower than that. Um, this eventually doesn't mean that we're going to drop straight down to uh, 35. We may have a pullback back to the 200 moving average. We may even have a pullback back to the 50 moving average. However, it's very unlikely that we'll break through the 50 moving average or 200 moving average at this point. The world economy is just not in um, a state where, where demand is high for oil. Uh, United States economy is slowing, European economy is slowing, and Asia's economy is also slowing. So when big manufacturing countries' uh, economies are slowing down, then of course demand for oil will be lower. Subsequently, uh, major oil producers have also pronounced that they will start um, increasing their uh, supply of oil. And of course, that hits this market even uh, more. Um, I don't expect us to fall. We may fall below $30 within the next uh, few weeks. However, it's very unlikely that we'll stay underneath the $30 for uh, any given period of time. We can just say here, we were under $30 for a matter of few weeks, but we bounced extremely fast from $30. And one of the main reasons is that most countries are just not profitable uh, underneath $30. So they will cut production um, really drastically. And therefore, the, the, the supply of oil will just uh, decline and, and therefore prices will increase again. So, we may see something similar to this. I don't expect us to see something like this. The world economy basically has to shut down if this uh, were the case. However, the world economy is slowly um, uh, is slowly slowing down, and therefore the price of uh, oil will also decline. But at this point, we are hitting uh, support within this area here. And if we get through that, we'll go down to 35. Uh, if you look at the Fibonacci retracements, we can see that the first Fibonacci retracement is roughly around $30. Uh, the 50 Fibonacci retracement is at 25 and the 30, uh, 61 is at $21. If that were the case, we fall down here. I don't expect us to stay here for a very long time. We will bounce certainly at the 50 and 100% at the 61. This was an anomaly that happened due to the fact that we had oversupply um, and storage was coming was absolutely full everywhere and the world economy was basically shut down. That's why we basically ended up in uh, this area here. That is not the case at the moment and it's very unlikely that we'll run into the same problems. And to the upside, there just isn't a lot of upside as I see it at this point. Uh, of course, we have the 200 uh, moving average just above acting as resistant. We have the 50 moving average just above here that's acting resistant. And after that, sorry, we'll have this area here, which will also be a resistance. So at this point, we are in between uh, this area and and it is more likely that we'll head downwards and we'll head up. If you look at the technical indicators, they are very bearish at this point. 
Stochastic is pointing to lower momentum, so is the RSI, and the MACD has also crossed the signal line. If we look at the weekly chart, we can see that uh, we are about to cross the signal line for, for the MACD, indicating bullish momentum. It's a very bad sign for the weeks to come. We may see this market fall all the way down to 30 within the next uh, two to three weeks. Um, the same goes for the, for the stochastic and also the RSI. They are very bearish at this point. Subsequently, the, the, um, the US dollar index is appreciating. And of course, that is going to hit this market even harder. Um, so commodities will have a very difficult time increasing price while that is the case. So if you look at natural, sorry, natural gas, So natural gas uh, uh, declined even further on Friday's session. We got really close to the, the 50 moving average. This is actually closest we got to the 50 moving average since all the way back in August, in the beginning of August. Uh, so at this point, we're still uh, trading above the uh, 50 moving average. Uh, the technical indicators are indicating that we are about to turn around. And that is also uh, expected. The 50 moving average has been significant support. And this, uh, this major pullback here from, from this decline is also an indication that buyers have entered the market and are pushing the price up. So people are willing to bet that the market will go up when we get close to this 50 moving average. What concerns me here is that the distance between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average is quite significant. And usually when we have such a significant distance between those two moving averages, we usually have a market that is overstretched. It um, increased too much, for example, too fast in this period and basically has to come back down. We have been training sideways for the last few weeks. Um, but this should be something that you should keep in mind that we could have a uh, a break below the 50 moving average just in order to get the 200 moving average to to get closer to the 50 moving average but i think that at this point is fairly unlikely as long as the uh, situation is uh, with the weather conditions in the united states at the moment uh, this market will uh, go higher in at least uh, uh, for the next uh, few weeks, probably also months. We're entering uh, winter uh, period now, so, so um, that will also increase the price in natural gas. If you look at the technical indicators, the MACD is very bearish. The stochastic is about to turn around, indicating bullish momentum, and the RSI is technically flat. If we were to break down to the, through the 50 moving average, we have this trend line here, or this is a support line, uh, which was tested and pulled back on Friday's session. It has not been barely broken yet. We need a basically candlestick underneath this trend line. And we also need a candlestick underneath the 50 moving average in order to confirm that we'll most likely go and test the 200 moving average. So to the upside, we have these levels of uh, 285. And then after that, we have the level of of 289 and beyond that we'll go all the way down up to 3.4 uh, no interest in basically shorting this market at this point due to the weather conditions if that changes drastically within the next uh, few even days or weeks then we may see this um, the price of natural gas uh, turning over and going back down again so we look at copper Copper has had an extremely volatile week. We uh, had three, two, three days where we basically um, increased in price, tested the 50 moving average several times before we got to Thursday, and then the price completely collapsed. We went all the way down to, uh, to, um, to Thursday to 2.85, 
And then on Friday, we went even lower than that before finding support. And we can write this upper. We find support at this level at 2.8. And then we rallied up towards the 50 moving average. We did close above the 50 moving average, which is an encouraging sign. However, I do expect us to go lower than this. We have created a small uh, resistant line here, which we have to break through. And this is starting to look like a descending triangle, uh, where we basically will go sideways towards this uh, corner here, and then we'll break to the upside or we'll break to the downside. Um, we could also do additional line at this support area here. And this may be an even bigger descending triangle. So probably we'll test this one first and then we'll go to the second one before uh, this market will decide whether or not we are going to the upside or to the downside. Just have in mind that because manufacturing is slowing down, because uh, consumption is also slowing down and people are not buying as many electronics goods and uh, and and so on the demand for this market will also decline if the world economy will go into a slum then this market will also be hit uh, quite significantly and that usually ends up uh, showing really drastic signs like similar to this the market can basically fall off a cliff if there is enough sign that the world economy is slowing down. So at this point, this trend line, we can almost confirm that this trend line that we had there, this bullish trend line, has technically been broken at this point. Um, we probably need a few more trading days to be 100% sure, but it looks like at this point we are uh, trading just at the 50 moving average and we have tested this 50 moving average several times if at this point i expect us to just go sideways towards this corner and then we'll have a break to the upside or a break to the downside it would not surprise me if we broke to the downside and um, and uh, went all the way down to the 200 moving average and then bounce from there um, we haven't had a major pullback uh, all the way since uh, March. So we may see the pullback that is occurring at this point. So if you took a look at the Fibonacci retracements here, it coincides with the theory that the first Fibonacci retracement is right here at 2.67. And that is just where the second triangle is so if i may make a long guess now this is not something that you should base your trading uh, strategy on this is just my uh, long-term forecast for this market and that is that we will start trending towards this corner break down trend further toward this corner here and then we'll uh, test the first Fibonacci retracement at 38 and at that point I would also guess that the 200 moving average would move towards the same area so we'll have a lot of um, support exactly within this area here a 2.67 probably a little bit higher and then if that breaks then we'll go much lower and if that we bounce from there and break out of this triangle, uh, then we will also will go even higher. Um, that is to be seen. That is just something as, uh, that is my long-term analysis for this market. And if we look further at the weekly chart, we can see that this market is about to go to the downside, turn around. This is a not necessarily really bad candle, but it is not really promising. This just screams uncertainty in this market at this at this point. And if I get rid of these uh, twisted this line, we can see that we have the first 
uh, moving average here at 200, just at 2.77. Underneath that, we have the 50 moving average at 2.6542. And if you look at the technical indicator for the weekly, they are not looking very promising. Uh, Stochastic has turned around two, uh, three trading day sessions ago and is heading downwards, indicating downward momentum. We were fairly overbought uh, three sessions ago and the MACD is about to uh, cross the signal line. We have been on a bullish run all the way since May, all the way back here, basically since March. So a pullback um, shouldn't be that surprising in this market. And this could be a sign that we are going much lower for uh, in this copper market. If we though completely turned around here, like we have done previously, for example, down here, we did it the same here, um, we would see a green candlestick above the 50 moving average. We would see a break of this uh, uh, resistant line. And then we'll basically go to uh, 3.1178 as the first uh, uh, major resistant. After that, we will go all the way up to 3.23 and, and beyond that. However, I am more expecting uh, further downside in this market than upside. Um, and taking into account all the, the, the economic situation and the political situation, um, and that there's most likely not going to be further stimulus in the United States, then it is more likely that we'll go lower in the copper market. If you look at the gold market, gold has been struggling to get back to uh, 1900 we ended up just above 1900 it does not look very encouraging at this point we can just put a, a line here just uh, just at 1900 so we have to have a green candlestick above 1900 we also need to have a green candlestick above the 15 moving average and we also have to uh, break this resistant line in order to go higher. Furthermore, this entire area proved to be significant resistant. There's just so much in the way of gold, uh, gold at this point. Um, so I would expect this to go lower before we go higher. It, I don't see that we have the momentum um, at this point to break through this entire resistance in order to um, go to the all-time highs. So at this point, I am going to wait and see how far this market will go. My best guess would be, first of all, we'll go to 1850. That was the lows, uh, previous lows. After that, we will most likely go to 1800, which is around this area here. That is that area which should be um, should be supportive. And after that, we should go um, and retest the 200 moving average. The distance between the 200 moving average and the 50 moving average is quite substantial. We haven't had this distance between these moving averages for basically basically down here. And even then we started trading sideways and also started trading downwards. So it would make sense for this market to break down towards the, at least the 1800 level, maybe towards the, 15, the 200 moving average, and then start uh, increasing again. Uh, this is a market that almost guaranteed will go higher. I just don't expect it to go higher at this point because there's just too much uh, resistance above. And yes, so, but things can change. Um, the thing is also that the US dollar is appreciating at this moment. And that is also a major resistance for this market. So buying this at a lower point 
is, uh, well, technically a gold mine. So, silver. Very similar to, to, um, to gold. It is struggling to get back to the 50 moving average. Technical indicators are not promising for, for silver. The uh, MACD is uh, trading underneath the signal line and is not really indicating that it will go upwards at this point. Stochastic is uh, crossing the signal line, indicating bearish momentum, and the RSI is technically flat. The problem here as well is the distance between the 200 moving average and the 50 moving average. This is just, uh, this was the cause of this uh, massive move to the upside. We just got way up ahead of ourselves and the market has to consolidate and basically come back down before we can have, have to go, we can go higher. And a big, or, um, uh, sorry, I uh, guess where this market will go is look at the Fibonacci retracements. We tested the first uh, in this area here. We found support around, uh, around we felt quite far here at the $21. Um, dollars. And at this point, we, we found major support at the 22. However, I do expect us to go all the way down to 50. That is $20. After that, we could bounce. That would also coincide with this 200 moving average moving towards the 50 moving average. And then you will have both the 200 and the 50 Fibonacci retracement as support. So that would be um, a good guess where we'll go before we bounce from this market. If we look at this trend line, this trend line also has to be, uh, has to be, uh, broken before we technically go higher. So having in mind, similar to gold, this market will go higher. I just don't expect it to go higher at this point. So we look at Gokoa. A lot of people were asking on the trade, what is technically happen, happening with Gokoa? Um, and the short answer is that we have run into support in this area. We are not trading below the 200 moving average. We broke through the 200 moving average, but we stopped above the 200 moving average, which should be a little bit encouraging. However, the technical indicators are at this point fairly horrible for Cocoa. If this is not a market that I trade often, but for the people that are trading it, this area has been an area that we have visited several times in the past. We were hanging around within this area uh, back in May and June. The same goes for, for July and August before we broke to the upside. And we may see a similar occurrence uh, happening now that we'll just hang around with this area. Um, if we break down from here, that will depend on whether or not the economy gets even worse. It's, it's basically showing that it's getting worse. And especially if the coronavirus gets worse, then this market will be significantly hit. We can just see what happened in this market from, from February to April. It just fell off a cliff. It tried to come back and then fell again. And then recently we have been trying to come back due to also uh, production cuts in cocoa that also pushed the price of cocoa higher. If you fall back down to this level here, that is fairly unlikely uh, as long as you basically have these production costs in, in cocoa um, and the world economy is not shut down, uh, then it's very unlikely that we'll go all the way down to this area here. My guess is that we'll stay within this area for some time and that basically we build momentum in order to go higher. At this point, the 200 moving average is holding and it looks like the 50 moving average is also holding to the upside. We basically are in between these two moving averages. And for people that are considering entering this market at this moment, 
this is really, really risky to enter because uncertainty is quite high whether or not we'll just stay here, we'll break to the upside or break to the downside. It is no, there's no real clear sign where this market is going at this point. We can look at the weekly chart for Cocoa and we can see that we ran into resistance at the 50 moving average and we just basically stuck at this 50 moving average. So this area here from 2.384 to um, 2.474 has previously been an area where we have visited several times. So if you look at, at Platinum, so Platinum didn't get back to the 50 moving week average. We fell on Friday session like most commodities did. And at this point, we'll most likely go and retest the 200 moving average. Uh, this is not a market that I expect will break down significantly. And the reason for that is because there is just so much support underneath. We have all of these areas here, a major, major area here that is supported in this market. Uh, we basically tried to get down towards this area a few, like two weeks ago, and we then bounced. Um, however, if the world economy basically slows down significantly, if we are going to a severe recession and so on, if uh, governments are, um, are paralyzed to basically support the market and so on, then yes, this market could go lower. At this point, I am not a seller. I am going to watch for what is technically going to happen at the moment. It looks like we are trading in between these two moving averages. If we break down the true uh underneath the 200 moving average, then we have this for uh, this support area here at eight, uh, 1826 and this entire area as support. So. I am more favorable to the upside than the downside in this market. If we break above the 50 moving average, then we'll go all to this level first, this 980, then towards uh, 1000. And after that, we'll go to uh, 1019 and 1037 and then beyond. Um, yes, technically just have to see if you bounce from the 200 moving average, and go across the, the 50 moving average. That is a that is a that is a clear sign that will go upwards. A break through the 200 moving average is is a sign that will go and retest these uh, support areas again. So you look at sugar. Sugar has found some resistance at around this area here, and at this point. I do expect a pullback. We got a little bit of head of the shells and we basically need to pull back towards the 50 moving average before we go higher. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement, we can see that it is most likely will go back to this area at the 0 0.1296. First, after that, after that, we'll go towards uh, 0 0.1271. And that would also coincide with a 50 moving average moving up towards this area here. So somewhere in this area, I do expect us to pull back before we bounce. Um, that will be a good thing because usually if, if markets get overstretched, then the, bound, and then the pullback will also be more significant. Uh, we are not yet at the same level prior to the coronavirus. We are around 70, 70, 75% there from these lows. Um, at this moment, we are in uptrend and we are quite overstretched at this point. We are, uh, we are basically overbought um, and all the indicators are technically showing signs of this market turning around before we go to the upside. So pullbacks are buying our opportunities at this point. 
if we were to break through the 50 moving average, we have the 200 moving under, underneath. And after that, we have this um, area of area here of support, which will be quite significant uh, significant support at if we ever get down to that port uh, that area. So hope you find these videos helpful. You're welcome to subscribe to our channel by hitting this button down here in the corner and uh, hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. Um, good luck and um, happy trading.